Hey Amen. On this morning, I'm I'm going to uh, go a little different route. I mean, y'all pray for pray for me, Amen. But on this morning, I want to start out by reading a portion of a letter from uh, Pastor Mickey uh, Merritt. Uh, he is the presiding elder of the National Association of the Church of God. This particular letter that I am going to share, uh, just a portion of it. This was a letter that was sent out to the uh, pastors and the leaders in the Church of God in response to the recent tragedies in Baton Rouge, Minnesota, and in Dallas. The letter reads as, as follows. Dear pastors and leaders, my heart also is broken and grieves for our nation. This morning, as I listen to the updates on what has transpired in the city of Dallas, the comments of Mayor Mike Rawlings and the Chief of Police, David Brown, moved me to tears. Both of them, as men of faith, requested that we pray for the families of the killed and the wounded police officers, the DART officers, their department, the city of Dallas, and for our nation. Mayor Rawlings requested that all those who can find in their heart to also pray for our civic leaders, our faith community, and others who would be gathering in the city in the midst of this crisis. Pastor Merritt continues writing and says that I am asking that we, the National Association, agree in prayer as well. This is a critical time in our nation as we are still recovering from the tragedy in Orlando. We join with our brothers and sisters in the body of Christ in earnest prayer and in spirit directed action. Pray for the families of the men who were killed in Louisiana and Minnesota. Pray for the families of those affected in Dallas. Pray for our police and first responders. Pray for our churches and community leaders. Pray for our government and civic leaders. Last but not least, pray for our nation. The magnitude of what we are experiencing can seem so overwhelming. God is still in control in the chaos, the heartache, the pain, the anger, the fear, and the uncertainty. Be encouraged as we continue to be salt and light in our communities. And he closes with a scripture. Scripture can be found in 2 Chronicles 20th chapter, the 12th verse, the second part of that verse. It says, for we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon us you. Two weeks ago, I, I stood in this very pulpit. Amen. We had the events that happened in Orlando. And God sent me to um, the 91st Division of Psalms, a passage filled with the promise of God's grace, his protection, and his comfort. But here we are again, a couple of weeks later. Of course, of events have ignited overwhelming emotions. Matter of fact, while some of you have been trying to process what's been going on, on top of that, a lot of us in here have had to deal with our own struggles. Amen. On top of what's happening, we've had to process our own struggles. Some of us right now, we're feeling numb. We're feeling confused and we're feeling dazed. I, I have to admit, I have to be honest with you on this morning after seeing the course of the events that took place on the TV and on Facebook. On that next morning, I arose and I realized that I had to put on a police uniform. 
It really didn't dawn on me while I was sitting at home and watching what was going on, but the alarm clock went off. And there was my uniform with a badge on it. I must, I must be real with you on this morning. I had, I had some difficulties. I struggled. Didn't want to put it on. Can I be real with y'all on this morning? I'm going to go somewhere with this. I, I, I struggled with it. It, it, and it wasn't because uh, I was in fear of retaliation of, of, of maybe what could happen to me because of, of me seeing uh, those officers' actions uh, uh, on TV and, and, and seeing it uh, on Facebook. I, I really wasn't fear. That wasn't the problem. I, 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 I didn't face that difficulty because of the situations that arose when this happened. Facebook was flooded with acts of violence towards black men. People that look like me, look like my son, look like your son, your grandson, your nephew, your, your, your cousin, your homeboy. Yeah, that, that, that wasn't really, really the major difficulty. I, and I didn't, I didn't really become too, too out of whack of uh, uh, reading the news that, that not in my department, but, but in the same county that I, I work in, there was a man, a police officer, that lost his job because of his criminal threats and his racist remarks to a young black girl that didn't even live in Kansas. Just 15 minutes from my department. Really didn't get discouraged because if you ask any police officer, I'm going to just clue you in, they will tell you that there are some bad seeds out there. You ask them, they'll, they'll tell you that. But they also will pause and say that there are police officers that are full of integrity, that there are officers that are ethical, and that they are committed to protecting and serving their community. So why was I so upset? I was upset because I was tired of seeing this scenario replayed over and over again. Yes, when things happen, there's a cry for peace. There's a, there's a cry for justice. There, there's a, a cry for, for prayer. But over time, it seems like we become desensitized. 30 days later, I'm telling the truth because if you just watch the news, maybe give us about uh, 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 two or three weeks, it'll refocus back on the election. And we will refocus ourselves. Why? Because it wasn't on our doorstep. Because the same last name doesn't match our last name. So I was, I was upset because not only, not only do we as the, the people of God and believers, we have become desensitized, the church has too. We don't mind having programs. We don't mind uh, doing this and doing that, being seen in crisis. But what happens when the crisis is over? So I was disappointed. I was frustrated, even though I only have two more weeks, and y'all pray for me because it's getting rough. I only have two more weeks at the force, amen, and I thank God for that, but I don't even want to go in. Don't feel like smiling, don't, don't feel like it. I'm the only black officer in my department to walk in, and it gets quiet. Come on, somebody. I'm just letting you feel my pain for just a minute. I know, you, I know you have your concerns and your issues, but just because I have the mic on today, I just want to clue you in on a few things, just a few. Yeah, I have a family I have to take care of and responsibility, so I'm going to continue to go, and, and I'm going to just be seldom seen. Amen. Some of y'all figured that one out. Last two weeks, I ain't, where Cofield at? Man, I ain't seen him since he came in. Are you sure he's here? Yeah, he took a car. (laughs) 
Y'all pray for a brother. I ain't perfect. God's still working on me. So all week I was praying, God, 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 send me a word. God, send me a word like you sent when Orlando had the issues. You sent me to Psalms 91. Lord, I need a word for your people. Lord, it's a lot going on. Lord, I don't want to get up there uh, uh, templing uh, brass and, and sounding cymbals and just be talking to be talking. The people need a word from God. But I didn't get a word. The Lord didn't give me a word. What he did give me, though, he gave me some instructions. Sometimes instructions are better than a word. Because if you follow, if you follow the instructions, you find out that the word was in the instructions. Uh, I'm going to mess with y'all for just a few minutes. So many of y'all might have remembered uh, several, several months ago, we, 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 uh, we, we did something different. So, you know, I'm out of the box for Church of God. Amen. We watched a movie on Sunday morning in the, in the house of God. Some people still ain't recovered yet. The movie was a war room. We were blessed and we were encouraged. And I think that that was one of the best ideas we could have ever done. People came out, and, and uh, it was in taste, and it was, it was spiritual. We prayed, and, and it, was a, it, was a good, it was a good occasion. So I'm saying, Lord, what are your instructions? Y'all don't understand God talks to me different. And this is how he talks to me. He said, if you can shut down service to watch a movie about prayer, he said, why can't you turn your sanctuary into a house of prayer. Why can't you turn your sanctuary on a Sunday morning into a war room? I, I was a little confused for a minute because I'm like, God, where are you going with this? You know I like to preach. You know I like to walk. You know, you know I like. He said, no, 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 no. I hear you. He says, but, but, but I need for you to listen to the instructions. Because if you don't follow the instructions, you know where that can lead to. It's good talking about prayer. It's good reading about prayer. It's good shouting about prayer. But sometimes we have to take action. We have to take action. So today we're going to do a, something a little, little bit different. If you're a visitor, hey man, I got my sister in here. She told me, and I remember it, and it sticked in my brain. She said, Brother Cofield, don't apologize for what God tells you to do. As y'all know, I'm a very apologetic person. I don't like to offend people, amen, on purpose, amen. I don't like to rub people the wrong way, you know. I, I, like, to, I like to have good relationships. But, but she said, Brother Kofi, if you apologize one more time, when God tell you to do something, she said, I'm going to get up. And I'm going to tell you, boy, you better shut that down. So I'm not apologizing on this morning, doing what God has called me to do. So this is the instructions that God has given me. Service is going to go a little bit different on today. It's going to go a little bit different. I, I hope you get with it. If you don't, you might just miss your blessing. But this is what the Spirit told me to do. He said that I, I need for you to turn the sanctuary into a, a war room, a, a room of prayer concert of prayer collectively, praying for some issues that are going on in our society. Some of you might, might have already cut to the chase and said, Brother Kofa, I've already been praying. And, and, and I'm, I'm happy because all that lets me know is that you are, you are familiar with the saying that if you only pray when you find yourself in trouble, you finally realize that you're already in trouble. So some of you have already been praying. You've been laying before God, and I commend that. But it's nothing like corporate prayer. 
It's, it's nothing like coming together. See, that's why we fellowship. If you look, if you look in your Bibles, you know, people that stay home and that they don't want to come out and they don't want to, they want to watch TV and the preachers on TV. The Bible says that's why we come out together collectively so we can encourage one another, so we can support the believers, so we can lift up. So it is a, it is, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a purpose behind God's plan. And that goes with prayer, too. You can pray individually. But in Acts, y'all, my, my Bible scholars, y'all know what happened in Acts. He said, but when they were on one accord in the upper room, <laughs> we talk about that rushing mighty wind. Y'all, 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 y'all read your Bible. Y'all don't read your Bible, do y'all? Talk about the rushing mighty wind, but they were on one of what? It didn't say it was just one of them. So on today, we're going to do a little something different. I have those that have committed Amen, and have taken on the responsibility of praying. Why do we need to pray? It's, it's very simple. For one, the Bible commands it. You read First Thessalonians 5 and 17, the Bible says that we need to pray. He commands us. It's not an option. It's not something that we, we do on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And maybe a little bit on Sunday. Romans 12 and 12 makes it very clear that we should be faithful in prayer. This is just for those that are, that are wanting a little preaching so y'all can say I, I at least said a few scriptures. I don't want to, you know what I'm saying. Y'all can write them down. Prayer grants us the privilege of experiencing God. It keeps us humble before him. It strengthens the bond between believers. And prayer will succeed when other means fail. That's, that's, that's why we got to go where God is saying to go today. So I have several people that are going to come up. And I need you to listen to these instructions because I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to get up really no more. I'm not trying to quench the spirit. It ain't about me. But we're we going to go into prayer for these families, these communities that are feeling powerless, that are feeling helplessness, that are struggling with despair, and even unspeakable fear. It's a lot of fear going on. We're we going to lift them up. We're going to pray for them. So I have a list of those that are going to pray. Amen. I'll read this list now. And as I, as I call their names, you can come up. You can stand. You can sit on the front row. Uh, they're going to pray. They have specific topics that they're going to pray over and pray for. And simply after they finish praying, what we're going to do, the, the altar workers, the, the ministers, uh, we're going to make ourselves available. And I don't care who it is or what you're going through. Amen. The altar is going to simply be open. You can come and get on your knees. Amen. You can ask for personal prayer in your life. Amen. A sacred moment, a moment of worship. I would ask. Amen. If you got your cell phones, this ain't the time to be playing on them. Y'all hear me? I'm, I'm, just, I'm just telling you what the Lord told me. This might be a good time to turn them off. Amen. I, I would also ask, because I'm going to give some more instructions. If you're walking for anything other than ministry purposes or you have to leave, I'm just asking you to respect the house of God. This is a holy moment, a time of reference. We, we want to clear channel to God. We, we don't want no distractions. If you don't feel like praying, close your eyes and go to sleep. Because maybe some of the prayers will saturate your mind while you slumber and give you visions and dreams <laughs> that you'll speak later on to this congregation and we'll move forward because of you. But we, but we, we wanted to set the atmosphere. Now I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. If you feel led, that's fine. As they are praying, 
I'm a, I'm a mover. Y'all, y'all know me. I can't stand still. So I am going to commence in walking around this sanctuary with some blessed oil in the hallway, in the rooms, over in the fellowship hall. I'm going to be anointing some stuff. Now, I, I, don't, don't do it just because I'm doing it. Because if you ain't believing, if you ain't got no power, if you ain't for real, don't follow me, amen, just to be following me. Only get up if God tell you to get up. But I, but Lord said, I got to move. I got to lead out. And so I'm not going, I don't want nobody saying he's being disrespectful. I'm just letting you know up front, I, I, I got another assignment that I got to do. So if you want to join me in, in that assignment, that's fine. But, but we're going to anoint this house. We're going to cover this house. Every door in this house, the bathrooms, the back room, the side room, we're going to cover this house while the prayers are going up. Because I believe God is going to do something in here. I believe God is wanting to do something on this block, in this community. And I believe we're going to be the ones that he's calling for in these last and evil days, not to tuck our heads and hide, but to stand up and to be counted, not to be afraid. And the only way that we can accomplish that is through the power of prayer. Yes, as soon as I leave the job, I'm just telling you now a preview. Hey, Amen. I'm going to be here praying. I don't care if you come or not. Going to set a time. I love the phone line, but I need, to be, I need to be in this house. Phone line is good. People, we busy. But my phone line going to be on this carpet, on these benches. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. If you're sick and can't get well, tell them what you want. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to exercise my right. I'm going to talk to my daddy. And I'm going to tell him what I want, what I want to see. Then let him speak to me. So those that will be praying, our first is seven individuals that, be, that will be praying. Amen. Pastor Marlene Seahorn and Sister Seahorn, they will pray over our government, our civic leaders, and they will pray for our communities. Brother Tucker will come and he will pray for, and you can go ahead and start coming to the front, amen, because I just want this to flow, amen. Whether you sit on the front row, we're going to just pass the mic and we're going to pray, amen. Uh, Brother Tucker is going to pray for our police and our first responders. Sister Heath is going to pray for our churches and our ministries. Sister Joy is going to pray for the families that have lost loved ones due to violence. Sister Vince, amen, she is going to pray for our young people and our, our black males. And Brother Pitts, he is going to um, bring it home with praying a prayer of unity. Praying a prayer of unity. Amen. I ask that you prepare your hearts as these individuals begin to pray. However God leads you in the prayers, even if God begins to touch you and, and you need to pray with somebody or pray for somebody, if you just need to sit by them to let you know, I don't have nothing to say, but I care about you. I don't know your pain. I don't know your hurt, but I care about you. However, however God leads you, I want you to be sensitive to the spirit. Not, not to my voice. I want you to be sensitive to the spirit. I will be binding stuff in the name of Jesus. I will be binding the enemy. That's what I'm walking around and doing. That's my assignment. I'm a coming against the spiritual wickedness in high places, spiritual strongholds. Just if you want to know what I'm going to be praying about that it is loosed, that it is loosed down here. And so I'm going to turn this over to those that will begin praying. Amen. Like I said, this is a holy moment. As soon as Brother Pitts finish, uh, I'm not getting back up here. The altar will be open. They will play some music, and we will pray. I understand if you have to leave. It's still early, but if you have to leave, I understand. But we are going to do something, I don't want to say different, I'm going to say necessary. 
necessary. It is time to stop playing, church. It's time to stop playing, church. That's all I have to say. I turn this over to Pastor Marlon. He will start. Amen. And please just pass the mic, and we will govern ourselves accordingly. Amen. If you can stand, you, 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 you're more than welcome to do that. If God puts that on your heart, if you want to kneel where you are, uh, you can do that. If while during, during the time we're praying, if you just want to come and uh, kneel down, but I just encourage you to, wherever you are, whoever's praying, let's just stretch our hands out to them as they pray on today. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus went into the temple and he said, my house shall be called the house of prayer. Amen. So that's what we're going to do on today. The, there's a hymn that says, what a friend we have in Jesus, all of our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to him in prayer. The Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come to you in Jesus' name. Lord, we give you all the praise. Lord, we give you all the glory, God. Lord, you're awesome on today. Lord, you're mighty on today, God. Lord, Lord, you're great on today. Lord, we just come humbly, God, right now. God, just praying, Lord, for our nation on today, God. Lord, for our government on today. Lord, from the president, God, all the way down to the mayors, God. Lord, in Kansas, God, and Missouri, God. And Lord, all over this nation, God. Lord, we pray, Lord, that your hand, God, would be on them right now, God. What you said in your word that the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord and that you turn it whichever way you desire. So, Lord, we just thank you, God, for your purpose and your plan, God, because even when things don't look good, Lord, we know that we serve a good God. We know we serve a God who's still in charge. We know we still serve a God who's in control, who sits on the throne, who sits high, and he looks low. So, Lord, we come to you in Jesus' name, petitioning you, God. Lord, you said if two or three gather in your name, asking for anything, Lord, that it will be done. So, Lord, we pray for peace right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for peace right now, God, in the name of Jesus. We say peace be still to every storm, to every situation to every opposition right now. Lord, we thank you, God, because greater is he who is in us, the power, God, that you put on the inside of us than he that is in the world. So, Lord, we submit our will to you, God. Lord, we submit every way, God. Lord, every, every, every tongue, God, on today, God. Lord, we call it under subjection, God. Lord, we don't speak any negativity, God. Lord, we only speak your word on today, God. And Lord, your word declares, God, Lord, that we're free. Lord, your word declares, God, that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof in all they that dwell therein. Lord, you're no respecter of person. Lord, you're no respecter of color, God. Lord, we pray, God, for every church institution right now. Lord, we lift them up before you, God, right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we lift every government agent, God. Lord, every mayor, God. Lord, every governor, God. Every senator, God. Lord, who you have placed in position. Lord, whether we like it or not, God, the Bible says that you have placed them in positions of authority. So, Lord, we thank you, God. Lord, you put, you put Moses in authority just like you put Pharaoh in authority, God. Lord, that we can see, God, your mighty power. So, Lord, we pray, Lord, that your people, God, Lord, that your church, Lord, that we would be your chosen ones, God, Lord, that we would know how to pray, God. Lord, that instead of gossiping, God, and instead of being over the phone, God, and instead of being on Facebook all day, God, shaking our heads, God, Lord, that we'll get on our knees, God. Lord, that we will speak good, God, and not evil in the name of Jesus. 
Lord, you said in your word, God, that we're even supposed to pray for those, God, who are our enemies, God. Those who, those who despitefully use us, God. Those who might be in positions of authority but might be abusing it, God. Lord, we bind every evil work in the name of Jesus. Lord, anything that's not like you, God. And Lord, we thank you, God, for putting people in positions of authority, God, who love you, God. Lord, those who love you, God. Lord, those who respect your word, God. Lord, we thank you for doing it right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, forgive our sins, God. Lord, heal this land, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we submit to you and we resist the enemy, God. Lord, we pray, God, that your will would be done, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, anything that's not like you, God. Lord, we pray, God, that you would remove it right now, God. Lord, every racist and prejudiced spirit, God. Lord, not just with our Caucasian brothers, God, but God, even, amen, in the name of Jesus. Even with us, God, there's no place for it in the church. There's no place for it in the government. So we bind it right now in the name of Jesus. We cast it out in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that one can chase a thousand and two can put 10,000 to flight. So, Lord, we thank you, God, that the enemy's got to go in the name of Jesus. Lord, bless right now in the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Lord. Ephesians 5, 15 through 17. See that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Thank you, God. Oh, God, oh, God. You said circumspectly, Lord. That means careful, being watchful, God, being cautious, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Redeeming, God, making the most of everything, God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God. 1 Thessalonians 5, 15 through 22, God. We're just calling and standing on your word, Lord. It says, see that you do not render evil for evil to anyone, but in always pursue what is good, both for yourselves and for all. Thank you, God. We just want to stand on your word, Lord. We want to stand on your promises, Lord, to do what you said, God. Lifting up our youth, God, to you, Lord. Lifting up our children, God, to you, Lord. Our daughters, God, our sons, Lord, our nieces, our nephews, God. We're just lifting them up to you, Lord. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father. Oh, God, these are our future, God. This is our future, Lord. You said train up a child in the way they should go, Lord, and they won't depart, God, when they're old, God. So we're training them, my God. We're showing them, God, to go forth in prayer, God, no matter the circumstances, in good times and in bad times, dear Heavenly Father. We want to show them, God. We want to be leaders. We want to be examples for our children, God, that this is the way, God, that you have called for us to do, God, to stand on your word, to call out on your promises, dear Heavenly Father. So that's what we're going to do, God. And I thank you for this opportunity, God, to cover our children, God, to lift them up before you, God. You said suffer the little children, not, Lord. So we just bringing them to you, God. We're laying them at your feet, dear Heavenly Father. We're pleading the blood over them, dear Heavenly Father, God. We're raining down your spirit upon them, dear Heavenly Father, that you use them, God, that you use them in a mighty way, God, no matter where they're at or what they're doing, God, but that they're standing boldly for you, dear Heavenly Father, that you touch them, God, you cover them, God, the blood of Jesus be upon them. No matter where they go, God, you have favor on their lives, God. We thank you, Lord. Oh, God. Oh, God, oh, God, favor on their lives, God. God, as they get ready for college, God, those that are heading off, God, that you give them boldness on those campuses, God, that they stand strong for you, God. They know their purpose of why they're there, Lord. We thank you, God. 
touch their hearts and minds, God. Help them to stand strong, God, that they're beautiful young ladies, beautiful men, God, strong men of God, that they can trust you and lean on you, God, that they don't need someone to be saying things to them, God, whispering little things in their ears, God, because they know, God, that they're beautifully and they're wonderfully made, God, because they have you, the Heavenly Father, Lord. So we just continue to lift them up right now to you, Lord, that you love them, God, that you keep your angels of watch around them, God, that you strengthen their minds, God, when the enemy tries to come in and discourage them and tear them down, God. Touch their minds, God. Help them to stand boldly, God, and say, get thee behind me, Satan. I stand for God and God alone, and I will conquer all, God. Oh, God, we're more than conquerors, Lord. Our children are our leaders, God. Lift them up, God. Put your protection, God. Our young men, God. Our nephews, God. Our uncles, God. Our brothers, God. Oh, God, our fathers, Lord. We thank you, God. Touch them, God. Be mindful, God. Live circumspectly, God, with things that are going on today. Be wise, God. Watch who they're being around, Lord. Send the right persons, God, in their lives, God. They're going to lift them up, God. They're going to elevate them, God. They're going to be a guidance to them, Lord. They're going to teach them, God, the things that they need, their Heavenly Father. So we thank you, God. We calling out on you, God. We thank you, God. Cleanse our hearts. Cleanse our minds, God. Forgive us, God, for things that we've done, that we said, God, that's not been pleasing, God. Wipe our hearts clean. Wipe our minds clean, God. Let us not render evil for evil, God. Even though in these days all the things that are going on, God, and we're getting angry, God, and we're getting frustrated, God, but let us not render evil for evil, God. Let us cast it down, God. Let us bind it, God, with the word, God, with your spirit, God, that we go forth, God, because that's how we're going to conquer, Lord. That's how we're going to tear it down, God. Our children are going to be strong, God, and they're going to stand up for you, dear Heavenly Father. They're going to be mighty, God, mighty men and women of God. So we plead the blood right now, God. We run your spirit over them, God. We ask that you cleanse them, God. Cleanse their hearts, God. Forgive them, God. All of our children, God. All of our youth, God. All of our men, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for covering them, God. Thank you for strengthening them up, God. Thank you for letting them be leaders, God, in their surroundings, God, at their jobs, God, at school, Lord. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father. Thank you, God, that they're standing for you, God, standing boldly, God. Not ashamed, God, but boldly, God. Boldly, God. They're drawing others to uh, you, Lord. They're drawing their friends, God. They're drawing those around in their circle, God, to you, God. They're being leaders, God. They're being examples, dear Heavenly Father. So we thank you, God. We thank you for their lives, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for lifting them up, God, for elevating them, God. Let us speak words of encouragement in their lives, God. Let us continue to elevate them, God. Even if we correct them, God, correct them with love, God. Correct them, God, with elevation, God. Not tearing them down, not to destroy them, but to lift them up, God. Because we all have sinned and come short of your glory, God, and that you do forgive us, God. We just ask that you just continue to help us and strengthen us, God. Strengthen us, Lord. Strengthen us on today, God. That no matter what's going on, you're still in control. You're still a mighty God. You're still a wonderful God. You're still an awesome God. And we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you. We can't do it without you, Lord, and we don't want to do it without you. We're glad we don't have to, Lord, because you are a way maker. You are a deliverer. You are a healer. You are a redeemer, Lord, and we thank you, God. We just call down your spirit, Lord, that do things, God, for our children, our youth, our young men, God, that's never been done before, God, and nothing can stop them, God, because they're going forth for you, dear Heavenly Father. So we thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. You, Lord we thank you Lord we thank you Lord hallelujah 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 in Jesus name in Jesus name it is done Lord and we count those things that are not as though they are God it is done Lord it is done Lord it's already done God and we just lift them up to you in Jesus name in the name of Jesus God the blood is on them the healing blood the cleansing blood the restoring blood the redeeming blood is up on them dear Heavenly Father we thank you God we thank you Lord hallelujah Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord. 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 Glory, Lord. Glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Thank you for our children, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for touching our men, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. We thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise, God. We come before you, Lord, with a humble heart, God. Come before you, God, calling on your name, God, because you said in your word, if your people, God, which are called by your name, God, you told us to humble ourselves, God. You told us to turn from our wicked ways, God. You said you will hear our land, Lord. You will hear our cry, God. This morning, God, as we come before you, God, we're doing what your word told us, God. You told us that we shall always pray, God, and we shall not thank God. God, I come before you, God, standing in the gap for the churches, God. And for the ministries, God, knowing, God, that you're the God of God. And you know, God, just what we need, God. You said we'll trouble on every side, God. You will perplex, God. But you said we're not forsaken, God. You say you're with us, God. And, Lord, you're with us on today, God. Teach us how to be bold, God. Stand, God, firm in your word, God. Knowing, God, you told us in your word to look not to the left nor to the right, God. But to stand boldly on the word of God. Knowing, God that you are the author and the finisher of our faith, God. Teach us how to stand on your word, God. Yes, Lord, there's trouble on every side, Lord. There's things going on, God, and we're like God, the storm, God, out on the sea, oh God, and we're wondering, God, don't you care about us, God, but you care about us so much, God. You say, oh, ye of little faith, God, help us to stand bold in the faith of you today, God, knowing that you are the author, God. You are the finisher of our faith, God. You see everything that's going on, God. You know everything, God, that is going on, God. And yet, Lord, you said, while we are in the midst of the storm, you told us to stand up and declare that Jesus is Lord. God, that we would not fall by the wayside, God, that we would stand up, God, and declare who you are, God. We are the people of God, and we can call on your name, God. Your word said the righteous call on you, God. You are the strong tower, God. We can call on you, God. The righteous can call on you, and we are saved. So, God, we stand on your word today. God, we're the people of God, the men and women of God that declare that we know who you are. God, that somebody can see us, God, and run and say, what, what must we do to be saved? God, help us to stand. Knowing, God, that we are not ashamed of the gospel, God. But we will declare and decree, God, the thing that is so, and it is so, because your word said it, God. You said heaven and earth will pass away, but your word will stand. So, God, we're going to stand on your word, God. Help us as the people of God. This is the church that they're looking at, God. Yes, we have a building, God, but the church is us, God. Help us to stand and declare, God, that we will not be deceived by the work of the enemy. Yes, there's things going on, God. The wind is blowing, the storms is tossing. God, the waves are going back and forward. But God, we're going to stand on your word. But in the midst of the storm, you have given us the authority to speak to the winds and the waves. And God, they will begin to wonder what matter man is this that can speak to the winds, can speak to the waves, and command it to cease. We command peace, Lord, in this nation. We command healing, God. Because your word said so. We're the people of God. The church, God, that stands and declare that we know who we serve. And we serve an awesome God. That we will not hide our voice under a rock, God. We don't want a rock crying out for us, God. But God, we will cry out to you. Because you told us to cry out to you. You said, Lord, we cry out to you. You will hear us, God. So God, we as the men and women of God. Those that are over the churches, those that are ministering your word, let us not be ashamed to minister the truth, God. Because it's the truth that is going to set us free. It's the truth that's going to make us free, God. So, God, I stand on your word today. We're calling forth nations, God, to stand from every four corners of this world to declare who our Lord is. And we know, God, that you reign, God. And we know, God, yes, it may look bad on this side. It may be look bad on that side, God. It may be a storm in front of us and one in the back of us, God. But we know, God, that we are covered today. We are covered today. And so, God, we stand on your word. We're going to stand on your word, God. We're going to declare we won't be ashamed of it, God. Because if we're ashamed of you now, God, you'll be ashamed of us. So, God, I don't want you ashamed of me, God. 
but I will lift my voice up like a trumpet. And I will cry out, God, you are God. And God, you reign forevermore, God. For God, I know that you are the author and finisher of our faith, God. We will not hide our light, God. We as the church will stand bold and declare that you are Lord, that you reign, God. You ever, you will always be the God of my life. That God, somebody can run into God. And they say, what must I do to be saved? God, I need healing, God. They can run into the safety place, God. This is the hospital right here, God. God, we can speak the word because your word said, I sent my word to heal. So God, this day, God, we as the people of God, the church, the body, the ministry, whatever we are operating in, God, let us walk in faith, not by what we see.